श्री जगत गुरु मदात्मा सर्वभूतात्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम I bow to God. I bow to my beloved Guru Dev. I bow to all of you as the living presence of the divinity. Good evening to all of you. When I was a little boy, I heard the wish. to be a doctor i wanted to be a doctor because i saw the greatness of the doctors those who helped me in my childhood when i was suffering from a lot of diseases a premature baby born in 1959 in a remote village no electricity to me during those days doctors were god i completed my high school two years of science created problem for me although i was a good student according to my teachers was bright but geology practical class created problem then i decided not to be a doctor anymore because to dissect living animal created so much of pain to me then i decided if i grow up i will be an instrument to help the people sort the people the humanity those who are serving in many different ways till now i love the doctors i adore their service and today i'm so happy to come to this prestigious medical institute in our state state of odisha and also having good reputation in india just to mention my gurudev's eldest brother my gurudev was born in the year 1907 in bengal his eldest brother was a student of the medical school here it was in towards the end of 1900 19th century 1890 he was a student here however i am happy to be here this evening to speak on a topic which is called as mental and spiritual well being i saw dr ponda then i met dr mahanti and dr mishra and i was happy to hear dr mahanti his family hails from south kulat and which is hardly 1 kilometers 1 and 1/2 kilometers from my mother's home i knew his grandfather who was a great personality in whose name the jagannath vidyapeet is established in that village however let us come to this topic 
There is no one in the creation who wants to be sick or unhealthy. In the nature, those who are living a free and natural life, the birds, animals, if there is no human interference, they are happy and healthy. Very rarely they might fall sick. With the human beings, or not only with the human beings, whom we keep the, under our control, let it be a dog or a cat, let it be a cow or a horse, they fall sick very easily. We the human beings, if we look at our own human anatomical structure, is unique because of our spine and our brain. We are the only creation on this planet Earth who can keep the spine straight, stand straight, walk straight. And our brain also, if you know the structure of our brain, it is much more developed than all other living beings because of the frontal lobe, We all are doctors and going to be doctors. When I think of my Gurudev, if any young man or young student came to him and asked, Baba, what should I become? Gurudev always encouraged him, be a doctor. A doctor is a 24 hours doctor. An engineer is not a 24 hours engineer. An attorney, advocate is not a 24 hours advocate. And a bureaucrat is not 24 hours bureaucrat. A doctor, wherever he is, since last 30 years I have been traveling all over the world, even in the aeroplane they announce, is there any doctor who can come and help? So doctor is in need at any place, at any time. That is why it is said Vaityo Narayana Harihi. Doctor is considered as God's presence himself. God has given us this human body. In this body, God has given us 10 sense organs. These are the outer instruments. God has given us four inner organs, inner instruments. And these four inner instruments are mind, intellect, ego, and memory. As students and professors of medical school, we are well acquainted with the physical body. And to a great extent, with the 10 sense organs. This body is 65 years old. The eyes are getting little weaker. I can go to the doctor to check my eyes. The doctor will help me how to see better, can tell you can use a pair of glasses. I had sometimes little difficulty in hearing. I complained, I'm, I'm having difficulty in hearing. I went to the doctors in USA, in California, the ENT doctors, they call their as head and neck surgeons. They did all these tests. They said, Swamiji, your hearing capacity is very good. It is in your 
I was in my late 40s, early 50s. They said it is 20 years young man's hearing. I said, I have problem in hearing. The doctor said, maybe you do not want to hear them. So you do not like to hear them. So that's why you have problem in hearing. The doctors can easily deal with the body, its internal organs, and external organs like the eyes, ears, and so on. When it comes with the mind, intellect, intelligence, memory, and ego, these four. And I was surprised to hear, surprised, not happy also to hear from Dr. Misra, the professor, professor in neurosurgery and the superintendent, when he was talking from the Mahabharata, I was happy to... And after the mind, intellect, ego, memory comes spirituality. Dr. Ponda, in his introductory talk, spoke about the definition of health given by the World Health Organization about the well-being. It is not just absence of disease. It is the well-being physically, mentally, socially, and also spiritually. I will give you a little example. We are living at present in a very strange situation. In my childhood, the main source of entertainment in the village was Bhagavata Tungi and Bhajans. Then, Occasional Pala Baskatia and Jatra opera. That's all. There was no cinema hall. Slowly the cinema houses were built. In 1980, every house became a cinema house because of the television set. And now, every pocket, every hand, the mobile telephone, I was sitting in an aeroplane. One young man, his food is served, but he's watching a movie from his iPad, so engrossed, he forgot his food. He's Now every person's pocket is a cinema house. In my childhood, very rarely people went out to eat. I have seen in the village farmer's market at the, the farmers came to sell their vegetables and other stuff. And their breakfast was very simple or lunch. Some goodia. They had their small shops in the farmer's market. And the food was very simple. Now we are living in a time when we have outsourced our kitchen and we are with a telephone call, <laughs> there is home delivery of food. Four days ago, a dentist who was also a faculty here was visiting me. I told Mr. Dentist, I'll tell you about my teeth. He looked at me, I told my first wisdom tooth was extracted here in SCB Medical College. It was in 1992. 
my three wisdom teeth at a time at a time means in one city was extracted in usa it was about two decades ago the dentist asked me how much time you have i have i said i have very less time can you extract all these three teeth at a time he said at a time i said can you open your mouth so long i said i can open my mouth then he he did it she it was she she did it after she extracted my three teeth i will tell you what she said she said baba you are a vegetarian i said yes when you go out you buy chewing gum you chew the chewing gum when you reach the ashram take regular food but better if you can bite and chew raw carrot and cucumber i'm not telling story i looked at her i thought maybe she is making fun of me indian sadhu bearded man how come our doctor still you take some soft food cold food be very careful then she said i am not kidding you if you do this you will ne never get swelling and you will have quick healing then i looked at her and then i asked can you justify then she said when there is anywhere pain or any surgery the nearby cells they are shocked they have trauma the traumatized cells because they are living entity they have lot of fear and when you take more precaution in your food and other stuff they become more fearful because they think what they are apprehending it is true if you take your regular food but carefully chew if you chew there will be better circulation i followed her you will be surprised after extraction of three teeth at a time nobody knew in ashram except the one who drove me in the evening i took satsang meditation classes no swelling nothing now i come back again god has given us body human body in the vedic culture we call it as a temple of god it is a gift of god god has given us the eyes the ears all these ten sense organs they should be used they should not be misused unused or abused god has given us mind intellect ego memory this four and unfortunately we the humans although we have developed a lot we have chandrayana mangalayana even from india we have so much of development in medical science robotic surgery transplantation and so on till now to think of the mind to know about the mind to deal with mind modern science has not proceeded so much by god's grace or guru's grace as i have been traveling for last three decades all over the world many times i have addressed the psychologists psychiatrists in their international conferences in west i have visited to many hospitals and giving talks in the hospital and you will be surprised to know 
even in USA, I think nowadays in India, it must be coming forward or because we mostly follow what happens in West. Even in West, in USA, in many hospitals, there is meditation class before going for surgery to keep the mind free, the brain free from tension and anxiety. What is this mind? Why we are in tension? Why there is stress? How to deal with it? How to have good, good health? I heard from some of the young doctors. Now, the government of India, even the state governments, seeing the stressful life, they're encouraging the doctors, the bureaucrats, the police officers to adopt some form of meditation, some relaxation, to deal with stress. I will give you an example from my own life's experience. I was a student. Then I became a teacher. As a student, you have to study and you have to appear the examination. To become a teacher, you have to appear public service commission. I saw my friends full of stress, even they were young. Because of stress, tension, anxiety, and all these things, they had constipation. They could not, I am talking of my young friends in college, to go to toilets, the restroom, they wanted to smoke. To study at night or late, I'm talking my experience at Ravensa as a student staying in the hostel. My friends used to walk to the train station to have a cup of tea or coffee and to come back again to read. Those friends, those who are studying whole night and sleeping early in the morning, the contrast was me. Go to bed early, get up early, read in at fresh hours in the morning. They were so much stressed before examination. I was relaxed. We all were going for examination, but I was joyful. They were jealous of me. I said, why were jealous of me? Oh, God has given you good memory. I said, it is not good memory. It is a lifestyle. I have adopted the old traditional lifestyle. You have adopted the modern, stressful and wasteful lifestyle. India is progressing. Roads are developing. Good vehicles. Income is increasing. But where is happiness? Where is joy? Where is peace? Where is laughter? Where is humor? Do we have really time to sit together and just to... Yesterday, I was in Pune. Till this morning. Morning 6 o'clock, we left Pune. So I met my schoolmates. Others were seeing that how we greeted each other. I said, do you know, we were schoolmates in early 70s. And we had friendship from heart. My friend came with the children, his children. And I think one, one was there who is also a doctor. So, however, where is the friendship? Where is modern time? 
it's do you know what is happening the definition of modern time modern time is that time when people have no time everybody is running there is a joke from other planet two friends were sitting and looking at the earth and people are running they said what are these people doing they said they are running so why they are running for nothing all are running but why they don't know why my friends young and old young future and our senior guides let our dean principal superintendent professors all young and old senior friends do we not want to live a joyful and happy life do we not want to live a real healthy life do we not want to spend some time not just this simple machine so much of time just to do to do to sometimes i see even the sadhus sitting on the stage and having this and taking selfie like this i smile thank god i travel all over the world once you leave me in the airport i am cut off from the whole world i have no way to communicate with anybody because i don't have a telephone i don't have internet access intentionally because i trust in myself i trust in god and i'm traveling even during covid i travel all over the world the purpose of tele that god has given us a mind an intellect and ego a memory and we do not understand how to use it now with simple quest understanding time is short what is this mind once i was teaching in the psychology department in the university of vienna i asked how old is modern psychology then i asked have you ever heard about yoga psychology so the answer you can easily understand they said no is there any yoga psychology i said yes i said can you tell me what this mind is can you tell me how this mind is made up for example the doctor with physiological anatomical knowledge they can tell how this body is made up with iron magnesium calcium potassium all these constituent of the human body but how this mind is made up can you tell how can i make my mind dull lazy and how can i make my mind energetic can you tell how to keep this mind more focused concentrated and how to make this mind evolved and developed unfortunately till now the modern scientists are not do you know what happened i was in one conference in austria where all many not all many prominent scientists nobel laureates nobel prize winners doctors they congregate and for every conference they invite one spiritual leader i was it was maybe 15 years ago the second conference the first conference they had dalai lama second conference the next year they invited me i asked the same question about mind i told do you know how to control the mind i asked we want mental health i'll give, i'll not narrate too much i'll give you some simple tips just like to 
keep this body healthy, you are doctors, you know much more. I don't want to talk. To keep this mind healthy, I will tell you yesterday's experience. I told you I was in Pune. One lady asked me, she had some problem. The previous evening in public talk, she wanted to ask me a question. I said, come tomorrow to the next program, I will talk to you. But you are physical, you are sick. She asked me yesterday the question, how did you know that I am sick? I said, was it honestly true or not? Don't ask the trade secret that how could I know how you are sick? There is just one very simple sense, proverb in Hindi, Rogi ko, Rogi ko, Yogi ko jaan, Aankho pe nishan, Aankho pe pehachan. If we go to the doctor, I don't know nowadays how to check. Sometimes they look at the eyes. In my young age, let me tell you, from my childhood memory, the oldest memory, till I was 18, 19, I visited the doctor almost every day. As I told you, doctors were my friend. I loved them. They really helped me. After 1978, I loved the doctors. My friends were studying here. I was coming to the hostel, but I didn't visit doctors as patient. So from the eyes, one can know one who is sick or healthy, one who is extrovert, restless, or passionate, or one is a yogi. From the eyes one can know. Same way, from our breath, each one we can know how is our mind, how is our breath. Because of the mental health, I am talking of the breath. If we are in stress or tension, if we are in anxiety or fear, how is our breath? If we are angry or upset, if we are worried, how is our breath? If we are peaceful, if we are calm and quiet, if we are sleeping, how is our breath? My Gurudev said, he said oxygen is the nutrition for the brain. The brain needs maximum percentage of the oxygen and how to provide more oxygen to the brain. My Gurudev said, our ordinary breath, which we inhale and exhale, it is approximately four seconds in breath, on an average 15 breaths per minute. Two seconds inhalation, two seconds exhalation, this breath is shallow breath. This breath doesn't allow us to get fresh air into the lung. As a result, our body doesn't get enough oxygen. If we do not get enough oxygen, my Gurudev said, my Gurudev was a great yogi of modern India. He said, when we do not get enough oxygen, what happens to you know? The mind tells, the brain tells, the mouth, open your mouth and breathe through the mouth, lung full, that's why we yawn. We should know how to provide more oxygen to the brain to keep our mind healthy. Another tip, how to keep the mind healthy? The food. You will say, what food? Really, does food help the mind? The answer is yes. 
what type of food my doctor friends to what extent you will agree with me or not the modern food habit processed food junk food food in the restaurant the food which call we call as very palatable delicious is this food really healthy salt oil sugar food laden with sos salt oil and sugar today i was walking in kolkata airport to change my flight to come to you i was while walking i was looking at ad it was for ad for chips its brand is bhut b h o o t bhut chips and the advertisement is chili it is spicy potato chips its advertisement i have seen one young mother it it is in usa and giving the potato chips to the baby and then taking coca cola and telling the baby to drink oh god when she was feeding the baby with coca cola and potato chips my body was shivering mentally praying to god oh god help them let them have little more awareness the food which we take it is it, it is not healthy for our body i'll tell one experience from my life it was in late 80s 1980s a relative of mine had stroke was paralyzed was treated here by the help of the doctors he recovered he was coming occasionally for his check up and he was staying with me when he was coming for check up i was the cook i was cooking food no salt no oil simple food i brought the cooking pot in front because he might think that i might have different food he, he might have different food serving food to him and on my plate praying to god then i am taking joyfully and he was really in miserable condition he was telling baba can you give little salt i said why tell little salt you are a baba you can eat i just want to i can't eat this are we not slave slave of the tongue i sometimes made joke with my friends i said do you know in odisha we take pakha water rice if you take rice we don't add salt ordinarily in rice if you drink water you don't add salt in water but if you put water in and rice together if there is no extra salt we we tell the taste is not good why only for rice no salt only for water no salt water and rice together there is need for salt it is because of a bit food which we take its gross part of the food goes through the mouth and goes out in the toilet the middle part of the food it is digested assimilated and through the blood it goes to the different body part the finest part of food it constitutes the mind that is why you will see the food and drink once i asked when i was young there was a conference i was a participant in the conference there was discussion on food and mind
a neurologist, I'm telling it was in 1980s, from Saftarjan Hospital, I asked him, doctor, do you really believe that food has impact on the mind? He said, yes. I said, can you justify? I'm telling what he told me in 1980s. He said, if I give you two, three cups of coffee and drink it, although I didn't have experience, you'll feel a little hesitated. If you take a chunk of sour yogurt, dahi, curd, you will feel lazy. Food affects. Food affects the mind. Food affects the body, physical health. Food, the breath affects the brain. The breath affects the mind. Then the exercise. Are we really exercising? Today, Swami Samarpananji was walking with me in the airport. Samarpananji is the Swami there. He said, do you know, because of you, now I am not using wheelchair. Because he was using wheelchair, I am walking, really. But I told him, now he is living at the ashram at Jagatpur. I told you one thing, you climb up to the roof and come down, and climb up and come down, climb up and come down. In our villages, during 60s, 70s, 80s even, people were working a lot. Physical activity is decreasing. If there is no physical activity, if the body is not sweating properly, the body will not be healthy and so also the mind. If we need mental health, I told only three things. One is taking care of food, simple, slow, long, deep breathing. Third is exercise. Coming to spiritual health, you will ask me, what is spiritual health? Spiritual health is what we know that is, but what are the indicator, parameter of spiritual health? Cheerfulness, love, kindness, compassion. It is not only for myself to have love for myself, not only love for the family, to extend the love for the entire creation. This is what spiritual health is. How to get the spiritual health? I will tell you again one incident from my life. I was the youngest faculty member for a long period of time because the government did not appoint young lecturers. It was a crisis and it affected higher education in Odisha because if you appoint every year, new young good students will come. They will not wait for four years, five years for recruitment. It was happening during those days. My seniors and those who were much elder to me and mostly the mothers, they knew that I was unmarried. They used to ask me, Babaji, I said, yes, why you are so happy? Because I was always cheerful. Cheerfulness, happiness, love, joy. I said, do you know, if somebody is unhappy, you should ask, what happened to you? It is not to ask them why you are happy. Happiness is our real nature. Joy is our nature. You will ask, how? Again, in modern times, we, many of us have problem in sleep. Sleep disorder. One old man was coming to the meditation class. It was in Katak in late 80s, early 90s. It was in the house of a doctor in Arunodaya market. Every Sunday we had meditation class. And in every meditation class, whenever he came, one hour meditation class, he slept comfortably. I asked him one day, you are coming and you are sleeping. He said, do you know, here is the time when I sleep very comfortably. 
At home, I cannot. Many people, they don't know how to sleep. Although they are lying down on the bed. Do you know? I will tell you about my sleep. Can you ever think sitting in the barber shop in Katak and when the barber is dressing my hair, I was sitting with eyes closed and I slept. 8 o'clock I have gone and 12 o'clock, 4 hours I have slept in the barber shop. At 12 o'clock when the wall clock in that shop my tongue, 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 I got up. I looked at the wall clock because I didn't have watch. What is 12? You didn't wake me up? He said, you slept so comfortably. I had three chair, I was working. We have problem in sleep. You think of our sleep. During sleep, what happens? My dear doctors, during sleep, the body is at complete rest. The breath is rhythmic. The body gets enough oxygen. Every cell is rejuvenated. During sleep, we pass through two stages. One is dream, in the beginning of sleep, then deep sleep, then dream, if we wake up in a natural way. This is the pattern normally we get. A healthy person, who is physically, mentally, spiritually healthy, his dream is less, sleep is deep, and in a short period of deep sleep, the body gets rejuvenated. I am talking of myself. I have been working almost 16 to 18 hours daily, Today I was talking to one Swami. He said, why you are working so hard? Too much. Then I sent, showed him a letter from government of India. I said, can you read it? They have invited me to go to Hyderabad. He said, should I go or should I send somebody? He said, it is better for you to go. Then, then I said, you are now trapped. On one hand, you are telling why you are working so hard. Now you are telling go to Hyderabad. We can, God has given us such a body, such a brain. And being <coughs> neurosurgeon, neurologist, we know the efficiency of the brain. Really, how much of our brain power we use? Do we really use our brain power? Do we know how to use more and more to have spiritual health? more love, more joyfulness. We have to develop few qualities. When I came here, two young students, junior doctors, when they were introducing, they were quoting from the Bhagavad Gita and Manasa Tapa Uchyate. This is the mental austerity in the Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said, cultivate contentment. Be cheerful. Live for yourself and live for others. Life is not just I want, I want, I want. Life is really experiencing inner fulfillment. One day I asked, do you know how rich I am? I will tell how rich I am. I asked this person, once in New York City, the hall was packed like this. I asked, do you know how rich I am? They looked at me. Then I said, don't tell this to anybody. They became curious. Then I said, if I want to stay one night at New York, will you not take me to your home and keep me at your home? Everybody said, yes. I said, now you tell me how many houses I have in New York City. I don't know how to drive. Your car becomes my car. You become my driver. Your house becomes my house. You give me your... Do you know what happens? This is truth. I travel all over the world. They give me their master bedroom. Sometimes I open the closet. 
they have kept two, three hangers for me to put my clothes. And they have full of clothes. For what? How much clothes do we need? How much food do we need? How much money really do we need? Do you know how many passports I have? I've finished. I'm traveling. We need to develop our mental health, spiritual health. For spiritual health, little prayer, little meditation, cultivating contentment, inner peace, and balance. This helps to get the spiritual health. We are born in India. We are blessed and privileged. When we speak of spiritual health, sometimes I made joke in the West. The joke is, the word spirituality, it comes from the word spirit. So the joke is, once a monk was going to give a talk on spirituality, and one man said that, Swami, I know what spirituality is. What is spirituality? The Swami asked. Then the monk said, the man said, he said, it is from the word spirit. We all are taking spirit every day. And we all are spiritual. Spirit means alcohol. Unfortunately, in modern India, there is so much of alcohol shop. It is sad to say, the younger generation people, because of peer pressure, because of blind imitation, they... When I was talking about alcohol in Paris, they all laughed. I was new. It was in 1995. I asked what happened. He said, you are talking about alcohol in Paris. I said, what is, what is in Paris? He said, people come here to Paris to taste different types of wines and alcohol. It is Paris. Do you know? I will tell you one simple play of words in Sanskrit or Indian words. Asura. The word is Asura. You remove O from the beginning and delete it and take it to the end. Do you know what happens? Asura. Delete O. Becomes Sura and take O to the end. It becomes Sura. Asura and Sura are synonymous. Asura means the demon, devil, Sura means intoxicating stuff. In this modern world, intoxication in any form is a damage to the brain, damage to the heart, damage to life. And how many of us really do we understand? It is sad. Being born in India, we are blessed. From our childhood, we are taught, pray a little. Go to the temple or pray to God. Here to conclude, I heard from someone who told that it was dialogue between Einstein and his daughter. The daughter asked him that, I have heard that you believe in God? Do you really believe in God? Who is God? You are a scientist. Einstein said, truth is God. I believe in truth and truthfulness. My daughter, if you want to live a joyful life, you create your own God, but have complete and firm faith in your God. That is needed. It can be... Faith in myself, trust in myself, confidence, faith in books, faith in the teachers, and ultimately faith in... If we have that, we'll have better health, mentally and spiritually. I'll conclude my talk with a little sad note. You'll tell what is sad note, but do you want to tell in India, 
especially with modernity, we are becoming more self-centered. The family is degenerating. Forget about joint family. It has become small family with the parents with one baby or one child. And one child with too much of care just thinks of himself or herself, nothing beyond. The old lifestyle of sharing is decreased. Living in the com compact apartment, there is no too much of social exposure. Our social responsibility is decreasing. Last year, October, I was in USA. Near our ashram, there is a fire station. Just to ask you, can you imagine how that fire station is run? There are many firefighting trucks, firefighters. Everything is voluntary. They are volunteers. Volunteers from the age of 18 till 80, they get firefighters training, certified, qualified, but they are volunteers. Whenever there is need, there is telephone, immediately they go and serve. Not only that, to maintain that fire station, the fund is generated from the community. People come forward to contribute. There is fundraising dinner. I went out to see this fire station because from our ashram, one young man who is from Sri Lanka, living in USA, he was a student of Stanford or somewhere, very successful young man, now living in ashram and taking care of the cows. And he's also a certified firefighter. One day he wanted to take me in his firefighting truck. I was sitting with him and he was giving a tour. Then I went to that fundraising dinner and how the community, the society coming forward for their social cause. We people in India, we all are educated. And India is a country, it, it is a positive note. India is the future hope for the entire humanity, entire world. world. Do you know why? In the whole world, the total number of younger generation, we are the highest. In other countries, the demographic structure is very alarming. The whole world will depend upon us. And we have to develop ourselves, not only just technically, technologically, academically skillful, we should also to accept our social responsibility, our attitude towards the society, how to come forward. We being the doctors, we have a greater responsibility. My loving doctors, young and seniors, I'll never tell old. We have to live a joyful life. We'll be healthy, we'll make others healthy. We'll be happy, we'll make others happy. We'll be cheerful, we'll make others cheerful. We'll have smile on our face. We'll bring smile on many faces. We'll be kind and generous and we'll help others to be kind and generous. And our world, our country hopes and expects a lot from us. And that's all. I think my time is over. If there is any question, one or two, if you feel you can ask me and let it be quick. Do not, after this, I have to go back to Puri. I came from airport to Jagatpur, Jagatpur to here, and from here to Puri. This is my life. Anybody, if anybody has a question, can raise the hands, they, they will show, give the microphone. If. <laughs> 